Hello everyone, I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey and you're watching Hit the Streets. They say that crime will rise to the level a community will tolerate. In Brevard County, we have zero tolerance for crime. These are the stories. So welcome back to another great episode of Hit the Streets, and boy do we have an action-packed show for you as tonight's episode is filled with car chases, drug arrests, and gun seizures. Tonight's show is a long one, and it's going to be a blast, so go put the popcorn in the microwave, grab a soda, and put the kids to bed, as we're about to put some butts in jail here in Brevard County. Now we started out after a quick briefing at our West Precinct, and our team hit the streets, and boy it didn't take long for things to start happening, as Agent Aziz Gawi grabbed Kevin Benish who was wanted on an active arrest warrant for armed burglary with an aggravated battery. The arrest took place without incident at 801 Dixon Boulevard in Cocoa, and Benish was transported to the Brevard County Jail by our transportation unit on a $65,000 bond. Our next case happens when Deputy Kyle Shuck and Agent Sean Hannigan observed what appeared to be a hand-to-hand -hand drug transaction that was taking place at the intersection of Melvin Chapman Way and King Street near 520 in Cocoa. As the team sat on surveillance, Deputy Shuck observed the backseat passenger reaching forward and making hand contact with the driver of the vehicle. As a black male was observed outside of the vehicle and then approaching it, suddenly the rear seat passenger exited and walked southbound. The black male that had approached the vehicle also walked southbound and the vehicle left northbound, at which time Shuck and Hannigan went into action. Yeah. Hey, come here, partner. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. You all right? Yes, sir. Put your hands up here for me. Hold okay. on, I got my ID. Hold on, wait for search me. Just, just put it right here. Hold on, wait, look, wait. Look like you did a hand-to-hand. -hand. Put your hands on the dash, okay? I ain't do no hand-to-hand, -hand, sir. And you smell like weed. I do not do no hand-to-hand. -hand. I don't know what he touched me for. Damn, man. Yo, man. Wow. Damn. Well, as you can see from the video, the suspect, Digimon Flag, was able to avoid arrest and flee on foot as Shuck and Hannigan were attempting to take him into custody for possession of the cocaine they found during their search. While the team briefly pursued him, they quickly returned to the vehicle to take into evidence the substance they had found on him. Possession. Cocaine. Hey, it's uh, Digimon Flag. While the hit team, along with our aviation and canine unit, searched the area, we were unable to locate flags, so Deputy Shuck obtained a warrant for his arrest for possession of cocaine, resisting arrest without violence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. The warrant is still active, so if you know where we can find Mr. Flag, please let us know by going to Crimeline at 1-800-423-TIPS, send us an email at wheeloffugitive at bcso.us, or just send us a personal message on our Facebook page, and we'll get the information to our fugitive unit so they can go corral him and take him to jail. And as far as Shuck and Hannigan getting dusted by this guy, well, as you know, we live in a world where everybody gets a trophy, so Shuck and Hannigan got the official BCSO Dusted Award until they can redeem themselves. Okay, our next case takes place when K-9 Deputy Adam Stewart observed a black and color Porsche acting suspiciously in the 400 block of South Burnett in West Cocoa. As the vehicle turned south onto Burnett Road and then west onto Brophy Boulevard, K-9 Deputy Stewart observed the vehicle parking at a residence at 3613 Brophy Lane, and the black male driver, carrying a very distinctive backpack in his hand, walking behind the residence after he exited the vehicle. Steerwald and additional agents identified themselves as members of the sheriff's office and ordered the subject and sole occupant of the vehicle to stop. However, the subject then fled on foot, and after a brief foot pursuit, the male subject was apprehended behind 3609 Brophy Boulevard by agents Zach Brown and Mitch Mathias. An immediate search of the subject, Nicholas Ray Davis, revealed a quantity of U.S. currency and two rounds of 40 caliber ammunition 
at which time Deputy Steerwald immediately returned to the back of the residence where he recovered the multicolored backpack the male subject had in his hand when exiting the car. A search of the backpack revealed a Glock 23 40 caliber handgun, approximately three pounds of cannabis, multiple baggies for packaging for the sale of the cannabis, and a good amount of marijuana shake. In addition to the firearm, the drugs, and the U.S. currency that was found inside the backpack, approximately 40 rounds of ammunition from a 40 caliber were also located inside. Now, if all of that was not bad enough, a search of the vehicle produced a 50-round drum-style magazine for a 40 caliber handgun that was located on the driver's side floorboard, as well as a digital scale and an empty box of 40 caliber ammunition. As part of the investigation, it was also determined that Davis is a convicted felon who has pending cases for habitual driving, as well as was out on a $600,000 bond for a previous drug arrest that took place in 2019. Davis was transported to Brevard County Jail on a no bond status for possession of firearm by a convicted felon, possession of cannabis with intent to sell, and an additional charge of possession of cannabis under 20 grams. All right, with Davis on his way to the jail once again, the team went back to work as Agent Kyle Pemberton and several of our special investigative unit team members observed a black and color Nissan Sentra committing a traffic violation in the area of Duke Way and Cambridge Drive in Cocoa. Uh, being caught up to it at Dixon and Pine I'm going to go ahead and issue it. Hit the, woo, hit the button. South down, I'm fine even now. At Willow and Pineda, Black Nissan Central. Alright, we're gonna be going eastbound on Willow, coming out to Fist probably. <laughs> As Kyle attempted to stop the vehicle, the driver and sole occupant of the vehicle decided to try and outrun us and our friends in the aviation unit. Right here, right here, right here. Hey guys, he ran straight out of the car. He went right there between those trees where you guys are actually walking up close to the fence. I couldn't see if he dropped anything. We're on the other side of him. Once captured after fleeing on foot, the driver of the vehicle Jeremiah Jones was transported to Brevard County Jail on a $6,000 bond for fleeing and attempting to elude, resisting without violence, and driving while license suspended with knowledge. Man, when are they going to learn that this is Brevard County and we are through playing games with those who choose to put others' lives at risk? Okay, the next lucky person who wanted to go to jail is Tiffany Hernandez, who crossed paths with Deputy Irizarry, or Izzy as we call him, and Agent Hannah Polito after committing a traffic violation in a Burgundy Kia. K-9 Deputy Hugh Binger utilized K-9 Lars to do a free air sniff of the vehicle, and things went from there. Hernandez was subsequently transported to the Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $3,000 on charges of possession of fentanyl and two counts of possession of drug paraphernalia. Now our next case happens after Agent Joe Grouski observes a blue Honda Accord being driven at a high rate of speed eastbound on Henry Avenue in Cocoa. 
As Agent Grosky activated his blue lights, the driver of the vehicle decided to take off in an effort to elude the traffic stop. After witnessing the irrational behavior and unsafe driving of the suspect, Agent Grosky terminated the attempt to stop the vehicle and then within a short period of time, observed the vehicle again near the intersection of A Street and Pineda Street. Agent Grosky quickly re-engaged the traffic stop and observed a black male wearing dark colored pants and a white shirt exiting the driver's side door and fleeing on foot. As the suspect, later identified as Philip Sawyer, fled from the vehicle, Agent Grosky observed him running to and entering the front door of 1204 A Street. As you can see from the video, after repeated verbal commands to exit the residence, Sawyer finally came outside and then took the ride to our beautiful county jail on a $5,500 bond for fleeing and attempting to elude and resisting without violence. Next up, a traffic stop by agents McGill and Weimer and an open air sniff by one of our canines produces over five grams of cocaine and other drugs as well. Anything illegal in the car? No. Okay. Dog alert in the car, so we're gonna search it, all right? That came out of his pants. He's got something up in there. I just can't get to it. What's your hiding? What's your tucking? Let's just be honest with you, man. It's only gonna get worse for you if you're not honest. That just fell out. There's some more stuff up in there. It's just about getting to it. You don't need notes, or is it in your ass right Be honest. Be honest, we're gonna find you going to jail no matter what. It's a felony too once you get inside the jail. It's only a felony three if you get it out now. As a result of the traffic stop and subsequent discovery of approximately 5.1 grams of cocaine, Pinnell Hearn was transported to the Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $2,500 for possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia. Now our next case finds us with the team of Irizarry and Polito once again, and this time they are trying to stop a red Mustang after it violated a traffic control device at the intersection of Mobile Avenue and A Lane in Cocoa. Red Mustang, two passengers. B way, now we're going north on Lincoln, and it's two black males in a red Mustang. Right here. Where'd he go? Right here, right here. They just drove through a house, and they're driving west on there it is. the street. They're bailing. Get up! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Both of you! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Turn around! Turn around! Hey, turn around! I got him. Yeah, I ain't going to I got him. I got him. We got him. We got him. I ain't do nothing. Child! His hand. Babe! You take care of him. Babe! Babe, tell me you were driving, babe, please. Babe, please be honest, babe. You ain't driving. She ain't no way she can drive. Hey, and we saw. Hey, Come on. Hey, put your hand back to back. Hey, ready, cut. Hey, forty-five zero. Hey, stop. I'm not going nowhere. Hey, hey, man. All right, relax. You're under. You're under arrest for fleeing and looting. I was driving. You are. We just saw you on camera, man. My wife would tell you I was driving. Now, what kind of man tries to blame his wife for running from the police, knowing that she would go to jail when he was the one all along driving the car? Leonard Lee, that's who. And that's why we took his butt straight to jail for fleeing and attempting to elude, reckless driving, and driving while license suspended with knowledge. To be honest, if I tried to get my wife arrested for something I did, being in jail is probably the safest place for me, as I'm married to an Italian-Irish redheaded girl, and I already live every day of my life in fear. Man, talk about making bad choices. All right, our next case is another case where the defendants apparently have forgotten that if you run from the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, you're only gonna to go to jail tired. While one of the subjects bailed out of the car early on in the pursuit, the driver continued to try and outrun our deputies and our helicopter for whatever reason. We have uh, multiple vehicles between us. Uh, we are not in, uh, actually following him anymore, so he's got the eyeball. All right, he's pulling into a house on Georgia Avenue, 508 Georgia, 508 Georgia. He's running on foot, northbound on Georgia. 
back here at the left. Yep. Definitely barefoot, no shirt, passing Highland. Guys, I can't tell you. He's just he's, he's stepping right behind him here at the corner of North Carolina, 701. After bailing from the car and attempting to flee on foot, the suspect, a Shavian Fluellen, ran into the front door of an occupied dwelling and was tackled in the living room by our deputies, who were in pursuit. Sadly, the homeowners elected not to pursue burglary charges against Fluellen, so he was transported to the Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $5,500 for fleeing and attempting to elude and also resisting arrest without violence. To make matters worse, Fluellen also had an active warrant for his arrest for the same exact thing of fleeing and attempting to elude. That one had a bond of $11,000. These little snots need to start understanding that if you see a star car behind you, the days of running from law enforcement are over. This is the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, and the only place you're going if you run is to jail. Now let's head over to Clear Lake in Michigan in Cocoa, where Deputy Herb Smith and Agent Tyler Harrow are conducting a traffic stop on a 2013 Chevy Malibu with very dark window tint. Once they approach the vehicle, they observe a bong near the leg of the driver, DeAndre Grimillion, who was then asked to exit the car along with his passenger. What happened when Grimillion stepped out of the car is that his gun, a fully loaded 38 revolver, fell out of his pants, and unfortunately for him, he did not have a concealed carry permit. Grimillion was taken into custody without incident and was transported to the Brevard County Jail on a bond of $2,000 for carrying a concealed firearm. So just because we hadn't heard from Shuck and Hannigan for a few hours, it doesn't mean they were taking a break as they were quickly back in action as they were conducting a traffic stop on a U-Haul van near Camp Road and the jail in Port St. John. Following a free air sniff by K-9 Deputy Tyler Haybark and his dog Colt, Hannigan and Shuck took to searching the vehicle and guess what they found? One and only chance to be honest with us, dog alerted on the car, so we're gonna search it. Please. Nothing, nothing no, in there? No, I didn't know. Okay. I know it's a rental, so it could have been somebody else, but we're just going to double check, okay? Let me check that purse real good, too. Various narcotics. Looks like methamphetamine, heroin, cocaine. It's cocaine, meth. As you can see in the video, Shuck and Hannigan, during the search, located meth and oxycodone in the van. So the sole occupant of the van, Michelle Farrell, was arrested and transported just a short distance to the Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $4,500 for two counts of possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. Okay, so our last case for the night was a doozy after K-9 Deputy Tyler Haybart was at it again with his trusty sidekick Colt, paving the way for another drug arrest. As Haybart stopped at Kia Sportage for failure to obey a traffic device, Colt does a free air sniff and well, you'll see. After a probable cause search of the vehicle produced 16 grams of meth and approximately six grams of what field tested positive for fentanyl, Christopher Fay was taken into custody as the illegal substances were found in a backpack containing his personal items. Fay was transported to the Brevard County Jail on a no bond status for trafficking in fentanyl and trafficking in methamphetamine. Well, there you have it, folks. Another great night out on the streets with our hit team and another night of working to keep our streets safe. When are these people going to learn that we have zero tolerance for crime in Brevard County? and that we will put your butt in jail if you as much think about committing a crime or victimizing one of our citizens. See you next time on Hit the Streets.